the excitement is mounting today and mushrooming and snowballing and skyrocketing. We're going to find out today what is ham radio all about and what is bounty hunting all about. My good friend John Sanders, one of my favorite anchormen, John and I are going to be chatting with Mr. Nicola Payone. Mr. Payone headlined in vaudeville at the Palace Theater. He was a famous vaudevillian and songwriter, and today he's a restaurant uh, owner, a restaurateur. i got to confess, I've never been to his restaurant. That's called Truth and Advertising. But if the restaurant is as good as he is as a singer, or as he was as a vaudeville headliner, it's got to be a great spot. It's going to be a good show today, a lot of excitement. My good friend Richard Ornstein might want, before we do bounty hunting with David Schultz, I'm going to ask the acclaimed writer in a moment, Joel Eisenberg, if he will introduce the acclaimed wrestler and bounty hunter. But first, Richard Ornstein is Mr. Physical Fitness, but on our show lately, he's Mr. Try and Stump Joe Franklin with some uh, little trivia. tough trivia. And you gotta, you you got to believe me, David, this is unrehearsed. If not, uh, oh, I believe you. If not, you would toss me, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I know you keep it straight. Keep it straight. Okay, okay Joe, uh, who played Gene Simmons' parents and the actress. Gene Simmons' parents and the actress. Right. Movie The Actress. Teresa Wright? Yes, yes. Spencer Tracy? Hey, very good. Great. <laughs> Who portrayed the fading matinee idol with the tremendous ego in After the Fox? That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Could have been Victor Mature? It certainly is. That's terrific. Uh, and Funny Girl, who played Flo Zicta? Walter Pigeon. Oh, that's Joe, easy. you are hot. That's you are easy. hot. Noel Coward's design for living. Team Gary Cooper with what two co-stars? That's a Samuel Goldwyn movie with uh, Miriam Hopkins and Frederick March. You're too much. Uh, for what two films did Gary Cooper win his Academy Award? Well, that's easy. High Noon was one. Sergeant York. You have it. Last one, quickie. What movie did the Academy Award winning song You'll Never Know come from? I know that Alice Faye sang it. That's, that's a movie right. I forgot. I don't know. Uh, hello, Frisco. Hello, Frisco. Hello. Hey, hello. That's right. You're hot. <laughs> oh, my hot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Richard, I want you to meet a few of my friends. Sure. This, I was going to ask my good friend, well, the, one of the most unusual professions, any field that's unusual is, is uh, newsworthy, but this one I think is incredible. Mr. Eisenberg, would you introduce Mr. Schultz? Absolutely. I'd like to introduce a very good friend of mine who is also one of the most infamous professional wrestlers of all time one of the most controversial professional wrestlers of all time. The man who would never, ever fool around the ring. He is now a professional bounty hunter, otherwise known as a bail enforcement agent. He is known as the world's toughest professional bounty hunter. But David uh, Schultz, don't be shy on a couple of those titles. I saw you on a couple <laughs> of those shows. They listed some of those titles that you had won as a wrestler. I would love to... I'm always impressed by statistics and titles, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I've won 18 different titles as a professional 18. wrestler wow. since I was uh, I wrestled 15 years, and you know it, it got where I was so tough for the professional wrestling business. They said that uh, I was beating everybody up too bad, and oh, that boy. I couldn't get nobody to go against me. And you know I didn't want to play games and cartoon shows, and if you know what I mean, Joe. And you know. Uh, after having 18 titles, uh, Southern Heavyweight, North American Heavyweight, Southern Tag Team, Southeastern Heavyweight, uh, I went through just about all of them. And I was approached by some uh, bail bondsmen, people who jumped bond, nobody could locate these guys. How many, how many are there in the United States, people who jump bail, about? Uh, seven million walking I, the streets. Seven million? Mm. I would figure about 70 or 80 or 100. Oh, no, seven no, no. There, million? Yes, yes. There's what? a lot of them jump because uh, there's nobody to go after them. Wow, that's Damn. incredible. Well, what was your first assignment? I'm, I'm chatting here with David Schultz, uh, Mr. Ornstein and Mr. Eisenberg, wrestler, great wrestler turned professional uh, bounty hunter. What was your first assignment ever as a bail bondsman? And, and was it dangerous? Was it exciting? And stuff like that. Yes, it was. Uh, an individual was a member of a motorcycle gang, and uh, I was working for Adrian Investigations out of uh, Bloomfield, uh, Connecticut, right. as a private investigator. And you know we got approached to go and apprehend this guy if we could find him and everybody was scared to go get him and it took me about seven hours to find him and uh i didn't see he didn't give me no problem you said as a uh, you were a private investigator is such yes. a person licensed a uh, private investigator yes but not, not 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 uh, bounty hunter no uh bounty hunter not licensed he works as uh as a indifferent person for the bail bondsman to apprehend the fugitives on his behalf for a failure to appear, only failure to appear. A lot of people get that misconstrued, Joe. They say, what was this guy busted for? A lot of drugs, uh, murder, attempted murder, or whatever. That has nothing to do with me. I go get him because he don't go to court. When he don't go to court, 
That's when they call me. That's where you come in. And then I go and track him down. After about six months of not coming in, they hope that the police will find these people. Right. And the police do a heck of a job. You know, they, they, I mean, every, all the police departments, New Haven, Bloomfield, Hartford, uh, Connecticut, Miami, Miramar, Florida, they're all great police. Oh, they do well, a well, great do, job. Do, does the law look upon bounty hunters as an asset to the police department? Well, they look up on people like myself as an asset because I go strictly by the law. Right. I don't break the law. You have a lot of people that try to be bounty hunters that go out and break the law, and they tend to right. try to rough people up and do it the way that they shouldn't be done. So long they don't last long. So long as the bounty hunter is law-abiding, it's okay with the law enforcement? Uh, most of the time. You have to get their respect, though. You have to show them you know what you're doing. Uh, you know, if you don't, you got a lot of people running out here trying to do something they know nothing about because it's very dangerous joe every day you go out you take your life into your own hands you've got to be tougher than the criminals that you seek to capture yes you, you do you have to be a lot tougher and a lot smarter right uh they're not too smart in the first place if it was they wouldn't be fugitives or criminals because nobody gets away with it no. one day i'm going to find them i found everybody so far so far i brought in 97 in 1988 97 yes Many people think that, that, that bounty hunters are fictional characters, but they, we're finding out that they really do exist, right? They... Yes, they do. They, uh, matter of fact, I was voted as uh, the top bail enforcement agent in the United States wow. this year, and uh, I'll probably win it again in 89. David, is it as glamorous as, as Robert De Niro makes them look in the movies, would you say? Or... You know, I watched that movie, The Midnight Run. Matter of fact, I was coming back a couple of weeks ago from Miami with a guy, and right. it was on the plane, you know, the movie. Yes. And the guy really got a kick out of his plan on the his was pretty close. Uh, they had a lot of uh, stuff in there that don't happen. Helicopters, these gun scenes and things like this, you know, that don't happen. But he was pretty close to the track there, Robert Nero. I, I really liked the show. I really enjoyed it. Let's say the fugitive, uh, how would I put this, changes his name, changes his social security number, changes his physical appearance, no longer contacts his old friends, and, and, and you have to go... Uh, where, would you, where would you start trying to find a man with these? Is that a good, is that a good thought? Is that a good... Yeah, most of, them, most of them do. Most of them change their name. Really? They change their social security number. Really? They, uh, yeah, they, they always call mama, though. Always they call always mama? They always call mama. Mm -hmm. They always call mama, and they always come back to the old grazing ground. Some way or the other, they come there. They either write a letter, they have to have money, they have to talk to somebody on the phone. And, you know, I had one guy that had two girls kidnapped... Uh, for two years, nobody could find these people. All the agencies are working, nobody could find. I located him in three, three months. Matter of fact, he's in, he's in jail now. One of the girls still in jail, and he's probably sitting there looking at me, wishing he'd get a hold of it. He thinks he wants to get a hold of me, Joe, but he really don't. And I found him in three months in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And the way I got him was, he had to call Mama. Wow. He had to call home and say hello to Mama. You know what I think about you? I think that you could find anybody. I can't find anybody. 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 Anywhere. I can find him. Given enough time, I can find him. If he lives and breathes, you can find That's him. That's right. I will find him. One day when he gets up in the morning, he thinks he's going to have a nice day. He's going to go out and have a <laughs> cup of coffee. But what he don't know is right. what day that I'm going to be waiting on him when he comes out to get in his car to go get the coffee. I'm going to be waiting on him. Or maybe at the coffee shop when he goes in to get the coffee or while he's drinking the coffee. Does it help to be tall? as you were? Or well, yeah. It yes and no, me. maybe. Maybe it's good to be inconspicuous. Well, who knows? Who well, knows? They, you have a few that try you anyway. Right. You know, but they, they decide real quick they don't want to try me. You're about 6'5"? Six, 6'5", five? Six, five, 270 pounds. Let me get a feeling. I'm about to show a videotape uh, that I think has to be great to watch. Let me get a feeling first from Joel Eisenberg. Any input and then from Richard Ornstein. My guest is David Schultz, one of the world's biggest attractions ever in wrestling and now one of the busy, busy bounty hunters. Joel, what's your feeling or your question or your comment? Well, I just want to make a point. There is a very popular misconception that bounty hunters are vigilantes. Right. Okay? Now, the term bounty hunter is basically a misnomer. They are not vigilantes. They do not take the law into their own hands. Okay, these people work with the courts. They work with the bondsmen. They are accountable. David Schultz is a, Schultz is a licensed private investigator. I know. And uh, he is not the type of person to go in the street, rub a guy out, you know, for no reason. Everything is accountable. You probably, still, you probably still get nervous. You probably still feel the adrenaline rushing every time you're on a case, right, David? Uh, yeah, every once in a while. It, it's uh, far in between with me now. Right. Because I set the situations to grab these people. You've got it down, Pat. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, you've got to be smart. You can't go down here and grab a drug dealer off the middle of the street at 1 o'clock at night down yeah. uh, in Harlem in New York. If you do, somebody's going to get hurt. 
Oh, boy, this man takes a strong stance against drugs, I can tell by the... And you do a lot of lecturing, I know, at colleges and high schools and organizations, right, David? Yes, I do. This is the three Ds uh, out of uh, East Haven, Connecticut. Yes. A lady named Kamel, she's running a great organization. She saved a lot of people from the drugs, and, uh, you know, she's really putting all out effort. Three Ds. Drugs destroy dreams. Mm. Mr. Ornstein, what is your appraisal? Hey, I, I think Dave is doing a dynamite job, and he was and still is a great wrestler. And David, I, I wanted to ask you, did you, the transition from being a professional wrestler into a bounty hunter, was there any training? Is there someone that showed you what to do or, or the direction to take the method that you're going to operate? Yes, uh, Tony Tose out of Adrian Associates is a private investigation firm that specializes in uh, pre-employment checks, uh, specializes in missing persons. Uh, locating missing kids or whatever he he set me down and he kind of he, he was kind of like the father image I needed for bounty hunting because he was a retired chief deputy chief of Bloomfield Connecticut police officer. he knew the ins and outs he showed me what to do and what not to do and still today when I work with his organization in locating missing persons and they're very successful you're a good man. My good friend David Schultz is all over the headlines. I'm surrounded here by front page uh, stories. Now, to be in touch first with Joel Eisenberg, is there a way, Joel, to be in touch with you as the official biographer of our charming friend yes, over here? Yes, there is. I'm, in fact, I am, right now we are in negotiations with a television series based on the life, the bounty hunting career, the wrestling career of David Schultz. If there was anybody out there with any questions or whatever, I just took my agent's card out of my pocket. The name is Harry Stanfuss of International Talent Agency, Burbank, California. The phone number is 818-842-1204. And to be in touch with David Schultz, is there a way or...? Uh... Yes, uh, if they want to get in touch with me, they can probably do it through your show, Joe. Right, right. I know you know how to get in touch with me. Right, and, uh, sure do. Right. You would, uh, you sure. know, it'd be a great... I'm, I'm always moving, Joe. They may uh, catch me in California tonight and Florida tomorrow. Well, you know? I'm glad you're on my side.